Amen. Amen. Give my awesome son in love a hand for getting out the props. Well, I love to open up with funny things and personal stories, but we're just going to dive into the word because I have a challenge to get an abbreviated message in an abbreviated time so that I can get down here and make Christiane become Mrs. Stephen Witt. You look beautiful and you look handsome and I, I love you both. Amen. We begin this podcast. We welcome you this morning, whether you're listening in the room or by podcast. This morning, I'm going to speak on the lifeline of mercy. The lifeline of mercy. Our story of context comes from Jeremiah 38, but we will get to that in just a moment. A lifeline is a thing on which someone or something depends, on which provides a means of escape from a difficult situation. A thing that helps someone in a difficult situation, a rope or a line used for life-saving. This morning, God is throwing a lifeline of mercy to this room. And this morning, he is challenging us to be that lifeline in the community. Ahead of the time, will you say amen? Amen. Reading from Lamentations 3 and 22. Through the Lord's mercy, we are not consumed. Amen? Amen. Because his compassions fail not. Someone say, fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, Brother Gerald, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in him. Can you say amen? Amen. Reading from 2 Corinthians 1 and 3. God is the source. Someone say God is the source of every mercy. And the God who comforts us. Powerful. He comforts us in all our troubles so we can comfort others. When others are in trouble, we will be able to give them the same comfort that God has given us. Can you say amen to the reading of God's word? Lift your hand if you will. Father, repeat after me. (laughs) Father, Father, in Jesus' name, name, I receive your word today. today. Come Holy Spirit, Spirit. speak to me. Let me hear hear. what you have for me this very day. I will receive it with joy, and I will be changed. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. You did fantastic. I bring you to the city of Jerusalem, Israel. Two weeks ago, we left Jeremiah there planting in the land and prophesying about the future of Israel, and he was on point. Nebuchadnezzar is coming against the walls of Jerusalem. And there is Jeremiah, and this is what happens to him in the 38th chapter. So they took Jeremiah, who took him was the princes of the kingdom, and cast him into the dungeon, Malachi the king's son. And in the dungeon there was no water but mire, so Jeremiah sank in the mire. Here is Jeremiah deep in a dungeon-like place, the most important person in Jerusalem. This is too crude a treatment for the man who was just guilty of loving God's people too much. The most valuable person in Jerusalem is in a pit, but he was still chosen by God. Can I get an amen? He was still the apple of God's eye. And to those in this room that feel like you have been put in a pit, or someone that you love has been put into a pit that you love so deeply, a difficult place, a hard place. Jeremiah could say the words of the Psalmist 69, I'm sinking into deep mire. I cannot stand. Deep waters overflow me, and I long for someone to take pity on me and maybe this morning you feel like you're sinking maybe this morning someone you love you feel like they're sinking in the mire maybe you feel like 
you're drowning. I have good news for you this morning. Jesus extends a rope of mercy and grace and he will never ever fail you. Someone give him a shout of praise in this room. But Jeremiah had to fight against the lies of the enemy in the pit. And in difficult moments, in difficult times, you and I, in confusing times, overwhelming times, we have to fight the lies of the enemy. Can I get an amen? And we have to help each other fight the lies of the enemy. Can I get an amen? We know God is faithful. We know his words are true. But when we're hurting, broken hearts hear through broken hearing. Fearful souls feel through, hear through fearful hearing. Our perception becomes distorted in a hard place. Can I get an amen? We can't feel right. We can't see right. We can't hear right. And the enemy's lies come so much. And he wants us in a hard place, in a pit, to focus on our circumstances instead of the God of the mountains. Can I get an amen? The enemy will lie and tell you, you must have done something wrong to be here. Something must be really bad. In fact, I need to tell you, the enemy will say, what people are saying about you. Whatever the enemy is saying to you, it is a lie because he is the father of all lies and he speaks no truth. Come on now. The thing about it is the enemy will manipulate those lies and fabricate the evidence to make it look real to you. We need to discern between the enemy's lies and truth. That statement from the enemy, you're no good, you'll never be any good. You'll never measure up. Uh, you don't matter. You won't fulfill your dreams. You'll never be accepted or acclaimed. And we begin to, in a pit of hard times, difficult moments, places in our life we've gotten ourselves into, or maybe life has thrown us in the pit. Because life through Jeremiah in the pit, we become vulnerable. We feel like we're sinking when our circumstances don't look favorable. But that's the moment. Someone say, that's the moment. When you need to tell yourself the truth. And if you can't tell yourself the truth, you need to get on the phone with somebody that will tell you the truth. Come on. Don't be going to your friends in the world because they'll identify with the lies of the enemy. Get on the phone or get in person even better with a son or daughter of the most high God that will say the truth to you because there are people who will agree with your depression. They'll agree with your oppression. They will agree with your woe, woe is me. But there is a people of God who are lifeline givers and they will say, you are believing a lie. This is not truth. You are a son and a daughter of the most high God. Somebody give him a praise. Say to someone in that moment, I'm not okay. And this church believes it's okay not to be okay. And then after you hear truth, begin to say, this is not where my story ends. There's an expiration date to this trial. I serve a God who designed my deliverance long before the enemy demised my destruction. Can I get an amen? And I'm not staying in this place. I'm not going to decorate this pit, commemorate this pit, build a Facebook group around this pit, make a thing about this pit, talk to my coworkers about this pit, rise in the sky screaming about the pit. I'm going to say to the world, I may be in a pit today, but my King Jesus owns a palace somebody give him a shout of praise and I'm going to say that he will turn this adversity into something that will make hell shake heaven rejoice and others will say there goes the redeemed of the Lord somebody give the Lord a shout of praise well I made my bed and I have to lie and I hate that statement that's not the God I've witnessed pulling people out of the pit now for 40 years of full-time ministry. Everyone may give up on you, but God will never give up on you. Well, I don't deserve a second chance. Well, brothers and sisters, you didn't deserve your first one either. <laughs> Neither did I. And you won't deserve your third or your fourth or your fifth. Anybody on like 1,222 about right now? 
Because of his mercy, we reap his love. I heard the Spirit say, Brother Danny, this morning early, he said, there are some testimonies waiting to be written. And I said, tell me more. And it's almost like I could see Patricia like a, a, a quill in the hand of a heavenly scribe just watching situations, waiting to do the forward and the endorsement of testimonies that are going to rise up out of the pit into the glory, realizing they are sons and daughters of God. If you're in the waiting room, your testimony is going to be written. If you're believing for something that hasn't happened, your testimony is going to be written Some give the Lord a shout of praise and you will say with David Psalms 40 I waited patiently for the Lord and he heard my cry he lifted me up out of a pit he put my feet on a rock he put a new song into my mouth and many shall see and shall give praise to the Lord praise him praise him in advance for what he's going to do the Lord's going to redeem the adversity and recycle it into ministry. Ebed Melech, that's the man's name in the context of this story. I wish I could read the whole thing. We don't have time. But Ebed Melech steps up as a lifeline for Jeremiah. It's not a name. It's not like Rhonda, Todd, Michael. It's a title. It means servant. And Ebed Melech went to the king and petitioned him and said, they have thrown the prophet into, and he's going to die there. He's going to die there. You let them do it. He's going to die. Ebed Melek could have said, man, I'm just an Ethiopian with beautiful dark skin. And people see me and just say, that's a servant. But he heard God say, that's my son who's going to make a difference. Come on. You know what? You could say in the workplace this week, I'm not the boss. I don't have the title. I'm not recognized by anyone. But God says, I see in you someone I can use for my kingdom. Somebody give him a praise this morning. Number one, use your voice. Use your voice. The world said, I see a servant in Ebed Melech. But God said, I see a man who will stand in the gap. Others will say of you, I see an employee. But God says, I see a woman of God who has the heart of mercy. Others will say, oh, Mama Linda, she's just retired. And God says, oh, she's refined, refueled, and she's coming out. Come on, somebody. Others will say, I see their weakness. And God says, I see their strength. Others will say, I see their past. God says, I see their future. Others will say, you will never amount to anything. And they said that about me many times in my youth. But God backs up like he does about you and says, you just stand back and watch me redeem and do what only I can do. Somebody give him a praise this morning. You see, people may see us sinking in moments of our life, but God says, I see them standing by my power, my grace, my glory, and my anointing that breaks the yoke. Can you say amen? Proverbs 31 says, be a voice for the poor and needy. Be a voice for those who are speechless. And that's what ebed Melech did. And God is looking for an ebed Melech generation. God is looking for this church. I shared a dream two weeks ago. If you missed it, go back and listen to it, where God showed me the future of the church. So powerful and in it was a pool and when I woke up he said Bethesda and I said of course which means house of mercy someone say house of mercy we are a house of mercy and God is looking for us to use our voice you are that rope we are that lifeline to the alcoholic to the addict to the single parent to the hurting minister to the broken hearts to the poor in spirit we are the ones like Ebed Melech that walk in and change the atmosphere because the kingdom just walked in the room can you give him a shout of praise come on look at someone and say this is a good day to be in the house of the Lord this church does that in so many different ways so many ways that I shared two weeks ago but this Saturday is queen for a day and this Saturday as we begin to be a voice it's like we spotlight these women and we say these people matter their worth matters. And Dutch Sheet says it this way. It's like a boomerang anointing. And we do something on the earth and it goes into the heavenlies. 
I don't really understand it, but I found it to be true. We bring our sacrifice, our time. We use our smiles, our gifts, and we spotlight. So a woman who is single and bored all kind of odds walks back into an apartment with a purse she could have never afforded on her own. Can you say amen? And the heavens respond and say, you are valuable. Someone living at Teen Challenge goes home with a beautiful necklace and earrings while they're trying to beat addiction. And heaven says, you matter. You are valuable. I'm glad we are the whosoever church that says you matter. You are valuable. Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise in this room. At the end of the finale, Lisa, come help me. At the end of the finale this year, it's always someone different. Cat's out of the bag. It's Lisa Cook. We're doing Defender still on this Saturday. Doing Defender. And at the end of that, it's, it's relived a woman's past and all of that. Thank you, Lisa. She didn't know I was going to do this. At the end of that drama, Christ, represented by Matt, puts a crown on that head. Now, you would think this is a little thing, but I'm going to tell you. I've said in this room since the merge of 2015 that we've been doing this and something swooshes in the room. It's like the angels come close. It's like Holy Spirit begins to stir the waters. And I don't understand it. But every time when those women stop me after the day, they'll cry and say, when that crown went on her head, that woman, I felt God tell me that I was worthy and I was valuable and I was honorable. We must use our voice. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of prayer. Thank you, Lisa. Give Lisa a hand. Use your voice. Use what you have. This week, text someone, encourage someone, and say to someone, you're going to make it. Number two, recognize the proximity you have to certain people. Look around you. Who do you keep running into? Proximity means the nearness and place. Who do you work near? Who do you encourage? Who do you do business with? Who do you go to school with? Who do you constantly see at the gas station? The powerful thing is that Ebed Melech took 30 men with him. The king said, you can go. You can get Jeremiah and take 30 men with you. And you see, I want you to get what these 30 men were facing. Famine had hit Jerusalem. It was a horrible battle. They were starving and hungry. And they, nevertheless, were willing to be among. I wonder if we're willing this morning to be among a life-saving adventure. Can you say amen? These men could have given excuses. My family is threatened. I need to work. I need to beg. I need to hide in a closet. Come on, somebody. I'm too busy. They were fighting for their survival. They could have said, I just need me time. And we all need me time. But we need doing the work of Jesus time too. Amen and amen. But at the weakest point of their life, they said, yes. What would you say this morning? What will you say? In time of weakness, Will you say, yes, heaven waits for an answer? I, I found a statement about almost 28 years ago. I've preached on this so many times. I don't even know where I got it from at this point. But it's this, and I live by it. God does not call the qualified. He qualifies the called. And you'll find me irritating you if you're in training underneath me, pushing you, prodding you, irritating you, loving you. When you tell me you can't do what God has called you to do. And reason I know, because I've fought the same battle my entire ministry. But when you come to the realization and the knowledge, he qualifies you and you are called by him. Can you give him a hand clap of praise? The history of the Word of God is full of people that did not feel qualified. Years ago, I don't know how many of you elderly people like me would remember this, but there was a TV commercial. It advertised a glue. The claim was when it repaired a broken object, the point of the repair would be stronger than any other part of the object. So under stress, it would break anywhere in the object before it would break where the glue was applied. 
That's what God does for you and I. The Apostle Paul said, in my weakness, he is made strong. So he makes it that he comes into our weak places and we become stronger in the place that we were weak than any other place. Anybody want to agree with that this morning? Give the Lord a shout of praise. You see, I know I've said it so many times. I don't testify about my strengths. They don't help anybody. Pastor Chris and Janet and I had a long time together this week. They wanted to share some ideas with me about their ministry. And toward the end, I said, can I tell you about my wig falling off story? And they said, what? And so I told them they were laughing till they were crying. I'm not going to tell it today. But it's one of those stories that I've told on television. It's one of those stories that I disarm a large group of women that wonder if that's all my hair. Most of it is. The other end I got at Jen's down on Inman Street. But come on, somebody. They wonder this and wonder that. I like to tell about my weaknesses. So somebody will say, wow, if she's really like that, then I know God can use me. Come on, somebody. I don't like hyper spiritual. Oh, I woke up this morning with the glory coming through the window. That wasn't even my sermon. That was for free. It's all for free anyway. But I like people that say I got weaknesses. I've failed miserably. I've made some huge mistakes. But God does not need your strength. He has more than enough strength on his own. He just wants you to yield your weakness. And he wants you to tell yourself, I'm qualified to be the called. No one is too weak for God's power. And if you believe it and you're a candidate, give the Lord a shout of praise in this room. Come on, let him hear it. Musicians, I'm not quite done. That, that I'm going to have y'all come on start playing for me, if you will, please. No one is too weak. These 31 men were starving. They could have said, I'm too busy spinning too many plates to do the work of the kingdom. One Saturday a year for Queen for Day, I'm sorry. No one said that. That's why I can say it here. Amen. I'm sorry. I can't do that. They knew that a life was at the bottom of the pit that was worthy of being pulled out of the place they were in. And they said, we'll go in our weakness, but together we will be strong. This whosoever church, our weaknesses together, we compile them with our strengths. But in the midst of it is a living, loving, glorious Savior who is strong all by himself. When you can't. He can just step back and say, Jesus, this is yours. Do what only you can do. Somebody give him a shout of praise. And then something happens. Ebed Melik does something. It's prophetic. It's stunning. I preached about Ebed Melik on Daystar two years ago, and I didn't even get this. It wasn't this message. But something happened as if a Hollywood author was scripting one of those, you know, like, you know that Will Smith when he acts out the homeless guy? What's that called? Yeah, that one. That one. You know, I, we, we just love those where someone's marginalized and they climb up in the movie. We love the way that makes us feel. And it's like almost like God said, let's just put the Hollywood authors to shame right here. And God began to write one of the divine reversal cinematic features. Ebed Melek gets the permission. And what does he do? Jeremiah says he goes into the king's treasury. Everyone say the king's treasury. Y'all go ahead and play. I'm good. He goes into the king's treasury. Now listen to this. Don't miss this. That's where the clothes of the rich had been discarded. In the king's treasury. Down in the basement of the palace. Probably 457 robes of the rich that just said, I don't need this anymore. I've got 1,000 purple, 7,000 red. Just put it down there. Discard it. Listen to me what the Spirit of the Lord put on my heart last night about this. Ebed Melech took from what was thrown away and not good for anyone, they thought. Ebed Melech took what had supposedly outlasted its usefulness. If the enemy's telling you that, that is a lie. 
If the enemy is telling you you're not useful anymore, that is a lie. Can I get an amen? amen? He took those things and he took those cloths to help pull Jeremiah out. He put the cloths around the rope that he extended down to him. I got a revelation about this, about you and I. Glory to the King of mercy. There's a parallel that cannot be overlooked this morning. Those people that others have cast aside and put into the used bin, God says, I'm going to use you. Those things in our life that others deem or we deem as worthless, God said, I'm going to use that. Can I get an amen? The seasons of our life that we felt were wasted, God says, I'm going to use that. In fact, the Lord says to us, through this rope in a moment, Ebed Melek will throw down to Jeremiah. I will not waste anything, says the Lord. That which you feel has been discarded or worthless, God says, I'm going to bring what a literary term is, peripety, divine reversal. And I'm going to use what no one thought could be used to use you for my glory. Anybody? candidate for that this morning just wave a hand and let the angels take a snapshot of you hallelujah and in this moment Ebed Melech looks down into the pit I don't know about you have you ever looked up from a pit to see eyes of love looking at you no judgment someone say no judgment someone say no judgment no shame and all he sees is Ebed Melech throwing the rope down to him, saying, put those cloths underneath your arm. This is a church that looks at people eye to eye. I remember the first person I ever helped many years ago with multiple personality disorder. I'm not going to explain that. I'm not going to take time with that. I'm not going to give any glory to the enemy. But I remember when a note was turned in because I led worship back in that day into the offering to Sister Rhonda and it said can we please meet with you my little people say they see Jesus in your eyes and that we can trust you I said oh God I don't know how to help us anybody with me I don't know what to do but God put this woman of God who is a woman of God today in proximity to me. And if Jesus put someone in proximity to you, I'll tell you what he told me. Rhonda, I know you don't know how to deal with this. But remember what the word declares. For this reason was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Someone give Jesus praise. Woo! And as I said, eye to eye to her, basically because I was afraid to close my eyes. Can I be honest? It's a long time ago. As I looked at her, Jesus just kept saying, say this, say that. I love it that when I was divorced and people put a big X on me, I love that people looked me in the eye and said, don't be ashamed. I love it when I was in a small college and a large church and it was tough. Nobody was judging me, but I was dealing. I love that people would look me in the eye with no shame and say, you are valuable. God is looking for an Ebed Melech church and Ebed Melech sons and daughters that will look the world in the eye and say, you are not what you've done. You are not where you've been. You are valuable to the king can you give him a shout of praise hallelujah hallelujah Jeremiah said here's us 31 to pull you out you were thrown in without love but you're being pulled out with love and faithfulness will you and I be like those men will you and I put value on the person at the bottom of the pit will we 
Jeremiah 39, a powerful promise is made to Ebed Melech. And the Lord says to this beautiful Ethiopian servant who risked everything to talk to the king and to get Jeremiah out of the dungeon so he could fulfill the will of God for his life. You see, that's the thing. That's the thing. There are people in pits right now in this room, people listening by podcast and people that you love that have a destiny in the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are to be that to pull them out with mercy, with grace, with love and get them up so they can fulfill the will of God. Can you give the Lord a shout of praise? Use your voice. Recognize the proximity you have to certain people. This last one is, is the final just note. Use your voice. I've written letters to judges. I've stood with women of hope and been their advocate many times. I've talked to judges on the phone. My late husband talked more judges into releasing young men on substance abuse into his care than I could ever count. One of those young men is my son in love today. Can we give Jesus a hand clap of praise? He talked one man out and today he runs a rehab of his own in East Tennessee. Don't be afraid to stand up for somebody. Don't be afraid to say something. Don't be afraid. The outcome is in the hands of the Lord, but God is looking for someone that will use their voice and use their proximity to bring the whosoever's in. Hallelujah. And third, Jesus became our rope. Look at someone and say, Jesus became our rope. Say it to the person on the other side. That was just to give me time to get down here in case you're wondering. She did it. She did it. She's almost done it. Okay. Your third point is... Jesus is the lifeline. And Jesus is the lifeboat. Give Jesus a hand. Jesus is the lifeline. Jesus himself became the rope that reaches into the darkness of every pit. Jesus became the rope that reaches into the darkest depression. Jesus became our rope. He epitomized the mercy that Ebed Melech demonstrated. For the Bible says in John 1, 4, the word became flesh and moved into our neighborhood. Come on, somebody. Have you ever been lost? Some of you old people remember this. Doesn't this look attractive? I just love it. Wish I could get a thousand pictures of me with a rope on my shoulder. Here's the deal. If you were ever lost before there was GPS, before there was smartphones, can I get an amen? amen? And you were a woman and you were willing to ask directions. Okay. My, my husband just cheered that one on. I remember in Atlanta and Los Angeles being so lost and getting out to a pay phone and calling the person I was trying to find because I lived in Cali for many years. And Atlanta, several of my best friends live there. And I'd just be in tears. I can't make anything out of these interstates. And it was, I was driving by myself, so I couldn't bring out the World Atlas. Come on, somebody. The Rand McNally, the, the gold of all the, the, the maps of the world. And they'd say, what do you see around you? And I'd tell them what I see. And this is what I see over here. And they say, I know right where you are. You stay right where you are. And I'll come to where you are. And you can follow me to where you need to be. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody, and give him a shout of praise. Christ located us in our mess. Christ located us in our disappointment. Christ located us in our weakness. He located us in our misery. And he said, I'm coming for you. Somebody praise him. Somebody praise him. You go ahead and stand. He pulled us out of the pit with his own life. He didn't stay up on high and throw us a rope 
down into the pit. He went into the pit himself. He faced death, hell, and Satan. He sank into the mire of our frailty, into the mud of our hopelessness. He sank deeper still to the depths of hell, to the stench of mankind's depravity. He descended, as the ancient creeds say, into very hell. And Jesus himself entered into the hell of every fear, every terror, every anxious feeling you would have. He stepped in and he pulled us out. And he didn't have to go to the king's treasury because he was the king. He clothed himself self with flesh and was obedient unto death and today he stands at the right hand of God and God has given him the name that is above all names somebody praise him somebody praise him this morning as I get ready to pray for you Hebrews 4 15 we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize and understand and feel what we feel. Christine, there's no temptation. Wendy, there's no heartbreak. There's nothing, Stephen, that he has not felt. And so he says to us, Cheryl, since you have a high priest who became that rope himself, come bold come boldly to obtain mercy and grace in the time of need. This morning I'm going to ask you two questions right where you're standing. They're going to sing a little bit for about one minute. I'm going to pray over your situation and we're going to transition into the next part of this program. Right now I want you to ask you who are you called to be a lifeline to? Think about it just a moment. Who do you work with? Who do you do business with? Who keeps coming across your path? Who's in your household? But I've tried so many times. Try one more time, says the Lord. Think about someone. You're to be the lifeline. You don't get in the boat with them of what they're going through in the world. I'm saying the sin. You become the lifeline that pulls them out. Then secondly, the Spirit of the Lord said, there are several in this room that feel like you're sinking in your circumstances. Every eye is closed. I'm not going to call you out, but I want you to lift your hands so the Lord will see. And you just want in this closing prayer for the Lord to know you feel a little bit like you're sinking this morning. And you need that lifeline of mercy. If you just lift your hand right where you are. God bless you. 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 And God bless you. Amen. Jesus sees and Jesus knows. And he's throwing the mercy to you right now. Now with every eye opened, I want you to lift your hand representing yourself or the people you're praying for. Just begin to worship for a moment. I'm going to pray over you this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus. We come based upon the mercy of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, we're so moved by the mercy that Ibn Melik showed. We're so moved by the lifeline that he gave. We're so moved by what he did, Lord. And we want to make a difference in our community. We want to make a difference where you have assigned us, Lord. Help us to use our voice. Help us to notice who's in our proximity. And let us depend upon your strength in our weakness. And now, Father, we lift up people, the women that are coming to Queen for a day and the people we're supposed to reach in this community and the people that came to our mind. Come on, begin to see them in your mind. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for your mercy to be received. We pray for salvations this Saturday. We pray for you to do what only you can do. And for these lives we're called to give us wisdom, give us creative ideas show us the path and Lord for every person in this room that feels like they're sinking your mercy is extended right now he just says receive it receive it receive his mercy acknowledge his mercy and today will be a new day now sing with me one time Waymaker, come on declare it in praise come on sing it my God, that is who you are. Come on and declare it, Waymaker. You are Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, 
that is who you come on declare it one more time over your situation way maker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are that's who you are today i declare jesus you are my way maker you have my life in your hand you hold those i'm called to in your hand your mercy I will be your lifeline. And Lord, I know I will see new testimonies written in the lives of those I've been called to serve. If you believe it, give him one more shout of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Yes.